Tonight, let's take this boring manual mill and turn it into a CNC mill. Let's do it. So after the long-awaited package to show up at my door, here it is. This is the CNC Fusion 3X kit for the uh, Sieg X2 mini mill. So um, CNC Fusion's down there near Houston, and so they got hit with uh, Hurricane Harvey pretty hard. So it took them a while to get this to me, and I totally understand that. Um, one issue is that I showed it to my door with a big rip in it. All right, let's dig into this thing and make sure we got everything. I'm not sure how many packing peanuts were there originally. Okay, what do we got? This looks like an axis. There's a, this is the Z. And this is probably the Y, a little short one. And the X, this is the ball screw and ball nut, and the bracket. Oh, here's the motor mount for it. Also some hardware. There's more. Another motor mount. Okay, so that's it. So it looks like it's all there. A um, couple things to note. I'm not super duper happy. It looks like they, this one got ate up a little bit. I'm not sure how that happened, whether it was in packaging or when they were taking it off the machine or whatever. Um, another thing that kind of hits the brakes for me is I've got eight millimeter diameter shafts on my motors. And these ones, they come with a quarter inch hole. And I made it, I put it in the notes that I had eight millimeter steppers and they said that they would um, uh, get me different um, get me different adapters for it so they must have messed that one up but I'll give them a call or an email and um, probably get that straightened out pretty easy I would think it is my other ball screws I ever had I never noticed ever having play like these don't have play up and down but they do have a little bit of play you can kind of hear it clunk back and forth so I'm not quite sure if that's just because they're pretty dry right now, like they just have a really light coating of grease, or if that's how they're supposed to be, or, or what the deal is. I did pay the extra 20 bucks per ball screw to have them um, loaded to the tightest tolerance they can get them. So hopefully that's all good. Uh, and then we'll, actually, it looks like this one's kind of bunged up a little bit too. So it's kind of a bummer when you see all these nice pretty parts on their website and you get them in there they're bunged up so there's a million how-to videos on this mill in this kit already on YouTube so I'm not gonna bore you to death um, honestly I couldn't even sit through them all so I kind of just skimmed over the directions and said screw it um, and started you know just decided to come on here and make a video see how it goes if I get stuck I'll go in there and check it out but yeah I'm not gonna spend my time going through every nut and bolt with you guys if you want that there's probably 15 or 20 videos already out there so, but they're not going to be as fun as me for sure. Okay, so we've got the uh, X and Y table torn apart. I sprayed it down with some degreaser, cleaned it up a little bit. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and start trying to put 
just those two back together with the uh, CNC Fusion Kit. All right, so we've got the saddle back on. I can't find any play in here, so I think I'm good for the Y-axis. Uh, went ahead and cleaned everything up, tightened the gibs up, and so everything seems pretty good. I'm gonna move on to the, the X-axis and put the table back on now. So pretty, pretty straightforward, honestly, a little bit. It was more difficult to take it apart than it is to put it together with the kit. So, so far it's been pretty good. Alright, so I got the X and Y axis on here, 
So everything seems pretty solid. Um, I took my time adjusting the Gibbs, so hopefully they'll be good. Otherwise I'll tinker with them some more. But it's like 10.45, so I'm going to call it a night. And uh, tomorrow night, hopefully get that uh, Z-axis off and do the Z-axis. Hey everybody, so it's the next night. Um, I originally planned on doing my Z-axis. Um, it's on the CNC Fusion kit um, Z-axis portion. So all three of them will be installed so far. I've got the X and the Y ready to go. Um, but I figured it's already Thursday night and I didn't want to just install those and then not have anything cool to show you with, with motors turning and that kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up the motors for the X and the Y so then we can at least test those out, um, get that all going, and then probably hit up the Z-axis next week. Okay, so I got my Y-axis wired up, wires run down below the table here to all my electronics. So right here is the uh, um, stepper driver um, signal from the computer comes into this board. It's opti optical isolators are on here so that there's no feedback to blow up your computer or anything. Um, those send the signal to the driver. Driver gets its power from here, um, these two power supplies. So that's how your stepper's run. Computer sitting beside it there. Um, I just fired it up. It's running Linux CNC. So first I'll show you the table moving. If I can remember how I just did that. Oh yeah, up here. There you go, and you gotta be careful because there are no limit switches. and It doesn't know where it's at. And see my accelerations are set really low. So that's why you hear it ramp up and ramp down so much. It's not just an on-off. It was to compensate on my last machine for the horrible um, attaching points. You can see it's actually looks like it's working pretty good. And I think it might be maxed out right there. I could hear a little, a little bit of junk. Yeah, no, I got some room there. Probably just a little bit of debris in the um, in the ways. Let's see, it's still going. Cool. There you go. So there's the y-axis moving. And so all I'm doing here, by the way, is just moving it, talking it back and forth. And you can speed it up. You can slow it down. All that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, acceleration, so you could actually crank up the acceleration. It was on 25, let's go to 35. See, that doesn't seem to really make that big of a difference there. Definitely doesn't have that ramp up time like it had. Let's go up to 50. Oh, that's a nicer. We're probably pushing it, but let's go 75. Let's see if it... So this is 75 millimeters a second. Uh, see, now it's more of just an on-off. Pretty nice. My other machine would be making noises and not liking this. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you can actually bring up the velocity. Let's bring that up to like 40 from 25. So now you got to be more careful on the button. There we go. That's a little nicer. I love speed. Like Ricky, like Ricky Bobby. So there you go. That's the Y axis moving. So let's go OK. So I'm going to shut everything down. I'm going to wire up the X axis and then I'll show you both of them running.
right, so I didn't want to bore you with um, going through all the setup stuff and everything, but um, you saw the time lapse of me putting this motor on. It's wired in now, so I've now got X. And then I got Y. And then there are programs around that you can do like circles and stuff, but you can see I can do you know, both simultaneously. This is just by holding two buttons down at once. So I think that's as far as I'm going to make it for this week, but I'm pretty excited to actually see this machine uh, move in the X and Y. Um, next week, plan on having a video for you guys to show you how to take the head off of here. I'm going to clean everything up and then I'll, I'll put my Z-axis conversion on there. Um, hoping to do that and then run a few tests, make sure everything's calibrated correctly. The biggest thing right now that I'm kind of worried to play too much with everything is just I don't have my soft limits. Um, set in the software so that basically tells the machine on um, how far or how much travel the machine has where the home position is and then how far um, to each side it can travel and still be within its bounds still would rather have limit switches on there additionally so you get a hardware stop that kills power and then you also or I guess an electrical stop that kills power but you also have your um, software stop so it's redundancy and it, it's safety. So want to have that so you're not breaking parts. So that'll be next week. Uh, pretty excited to get this thing going. I've already got one project in mind. So I'll be showing that to you next week too, hopefully. And uh, we'll get the ball rolling and start making some cool parts. So see you next week.